like this weird competition of cool. You take a reef shot to the side of the head for a wave like that. If I can win this, this will be the greatest moment of my life. All the girls are surfing so well. They're beautiful inside and out. Going skagless is a whole nother realm. It's like a fast version of body surfing. There's something about just getting in the ocean and cleansing ourselves of everything else that's going on in the world. My job description is student. Student of surfing. Board Stories TV is proudly presented by Cholo's Homestyle Mexican in Haleiwa Town, Waimea Valley on Oahu's North Shore, and OC16, 100% original, 100% local. Aloha and welcome to Board Stories, where this time we're highlighting the Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational. Pipe is the perfect venue for the bodyboard crew, and with this contest it's the perfect platform to show off their prowess. We talk with some of the riders and dive into the meat of the event where the level is constantly being pushed by the international field. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. This Board Stories Bodyboard segment is brought to you by Science Bodyboards. On this special episode of Board Stories, we highlight the 2016 Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational. After a two-year hiatus, the bodyboard crew was more than ready to bring their wave-riding craft back to the one and only Pipeline. As this year's first stop to the Association of Professional Bodyboarding World Tour, the dedicated pack were eager to show off their prowess at the famed North Shore Reef. Pipeline is an amazing way for bodyboarding because it's, you know, it's always different, it's always changing, and you can do different moves. You can do big airs and get deep barrels, and you can do them on the same wave. Powerful, hollow, and their size. And a lot of times it's more about harnessing the power and redirecting it rather than trying to generate your own speed or power. So it's a kind of wave that really suits bodyboarding. Just a lot of juice, big barrels, big ramps, rights, lefts, two feet to 20 feet. It's a pretty incredible wave. The way to kind of think about a pipeline is it's more like a wedging beach break. It's on reef, but, uh, and it's these imperfections that create, you know, really interesting things about the wave. It throws like rogue wedges into it and, you know, unpredictable kind of elements to the wave. And for a bodyboard, that's kind of what you want because you always want to be thrown in the deep end and, and challenge yourself a little bit. And pipeline's kind of the ideal location for that. New to the event this year was an invitational format bringing together the top APB riders with qualifying IBA Hawaii Tour competitors and a stacked list of invitee pipe chargers on a world-class stage. It's pretty cool. We've uh, invited some of the best kind of slab riders and barrel riders from around the world along with the top tour competitors so they kind of all go in in the mix. So it's kind of a way to bring everyone together. So I'm super stoked that it's kind of it's come to fruition. The format is really good with the top 16 surfing against international guys and I don't know it's just it's pretty extreme because everybody gets a shot at it. It's not like a world tour event where only the top seeds are in there so it's better for us locals to have fun and try and win it. For everyone from Hawaii it's what we look forward to to have our brethren from around the world come and compete and we want to show them what we got and beat them. I want to beat all the international guys. They're so good. A lot of guys come here and they, they push us to really come out and surf as much as possible and, and go for it. It's my fourth trip to Hawaii and I've never been able to compete and it's been a dream of mine since I was a, a grommet. So just the chance to get to surf a pipeline with three other guys is yeah, it's like a dream. Yeah, it's pretty cool to be invited here. I'm start well. Yeah, maybe this year I'm think about do the tour because really nice waves. Beyond the men's pro field, the event also included divisions highlighting juniors, women, drop knee, and the always exciting stand-up bodyboarding. With plenty of swell and a frothing pack of bodyboarders, the stage was set for the ultimate showdown. Stick around as we dive into the Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational, showcasing some of the top riders of the sport, all dedicated to the passion of bodyboarding. Board Stories will be right back.
The opening day of the 2016 Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational donned a pulsing eight foot plus wedge and peaks for the first two and a half rounds of action. The conditions were tricky, but nonetheless, the canvas was set for late drops, big bowls, and lips to launch. The format consisted of competitive tour qualifiers and free surf invitees, making for a clash of hungry chargers from Hawaii and beyond. Local standouts like Trevor Cam and Kiahi Parker were ready to make their impression too. barrels, it was Kauai's Sammy Morantino who dropped the highest heat total of the day. As an invitee, Aussie Christian Rizzo Rigocini locked into some choice backdoor waves, advancing through to the third round. Yeah, good. The first one, yeah, I got a really good right hand. It came in in nine. And um, that one nine pointer made the whole contest, made it so worth it. I'm so stoked. Also showing force for the Aussies was Dave Winchester nailing a huge invert and Lachlan Cramps dropping the second highest heat total of the day. Six time world champion Galerme Tomega showed he was still hungry and guaranteed to put in a good performance at Pipe. However, the ride of the day went to 18-year-old Puerto Rican wonder kid, Abner Diarce, who stroked into the longest pipe barrel of the day. For me, pipeline is the best wave in the world. For me, it's you know, like a great achievement. Pipeline competing with the best bodyboarders in the world. I love it and I just what I want to do. One familiar but unexpected name on the heat draw was none other than surfing superstar Jamie O'Brien, receiving a last minute invitation to show what he's got on a bodyboard. It's great, he's not afraid to like try and put himself out there. You know, he knows this lineup is as good as anyone, pretty much. I know he bodyboards and it'll be pretty cool to see how it goes. He's staying with me uh, in Tahiti and sometimes we'll be switching. He'll get my bodyboard and, and I'll get his surfboard. It's my home break and I figured it'd be something kind of fun to do. I stopped doing it and I just was so focused on surfing and I, I felt like everyone's so serious about like you know, riding waves one way. Exciting, it's fun, it's a different way to ride pipe, and um, I figure why not? Before the finish of day one, the finalists for the stand-up division hit the water, with an all Hawaii showing, including Mr. J-O-B. I got into the stand-up bodyboard through a trials. It should be fun, I gotta go hunt down little rights. I cannot go left on a stand-up boogie, so it's 10, 12 feet out of pipe today. Given it was tough pipe conditions for standing up on a bodyboard, the boys went for it anyway. But coming out on top was the IBA Hawaii Tour stand-up champ, Sammy Morantino, who stuck to his front side, finding some open corners to carve out the win. When we come back, the Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational dives into more divisions, showcasing the best drop knee, women, and junior pro competitors. Stay right here with Board Stories.
second day of the Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational highlighted separate divisions alongside the Men's Pro Main Event. The division showcased a one heat final to crown winners in Drop Knee, Women's Pro, and Junior Pro. In the Drop Knee final, the battle seemed to be against reigning world champ Dave Hubbard. Hub started off quick with some clean pipe waves, but the other finalists weren't about to lay down. Matt Crilly, the lone regular footer, took to his front side at back door, but the three goofy footers all found better scores going left at pipeline. IBA Hawaii Tour DK champ Sammy Morantino gave it a good fight, but in the end, DK master Dave Hubbard put up an impressive 17.84 heat total to take out the win. Yeah, I'm always super stoked to compete out here. This is the epitome of the sport. It's always been a real goal for me to do well here at Pipeline, so whenever I'm able to ride well in the event or in a free surf out here, I'm always stoked. The Women Pro Finals saw riders from separate parts of the globe, with two Brazilians and two Japanese bodyboarders representing for their country. Coming in a close second was Jessica Becker, but edging her out was Ayaka Suzuki, stoked on the top spot. The Junior Pro Finals showcased the best of the new breed. Hawaii's Kavika Kamai got some great rides in the pumping surf, finishing behind France's Milo Delage. Brazilian prodigy Socrates Santana found a few gems of his own, convoying it up off the end section. But Kauai Super Grom Tanner McDaniel frothed in the pipe waves all the way to the top. So stoked. This is my second time winning the juniors here at Pipes. I don't know, the waves are so fun in the final. Like, six foot pipe in the finals for the juniors is like so sick. I'm going to be competing on the Junior World Tour this year. This is a pretty good way to start off. I want to win the Junior World title this year. Um, I've gotten close two years in a row now, and um, I want this year to be the year I win. Pipe is a good way to start off the year, I think. Up next, the men's pro field battles it out towards the finals. We're just getting heated up. Stay locked to board stories. It's game time down at the Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational. By round three, the top seeds were hitting the water and the clashes between the competitors and free surfers was hitting its boiling point. But with a deep list of names, it was anyone's guess who would take it out. You know, there's so many good guys in this event and it's gonna be really hard to tell who really comes out ahead, but you got the best riders from all corners of the globe. It's really a, a well attended event. There's so many good guys at Pipe, and especially this year, seeing as it's an uh, invitational event, you're getting a lot of the most elite guys at Pipeline coming to this event. But um, for me, I would say like the best guys at Pipeline are the guys that spend a lot of time here. The guys like Jeff Hubbard, Spencer Skipper, Tomega. Well, the local guys like Jeff Hubbard and the Aussie guys like Ben Player, Ryan Hardy, those guys are crazy out there. Oh, well, definitely the number one guy on that list would be Jeff Hubbard, because he's a freak. Dave Hubbard, his brother as well, Ben Flair. I mean, those top three guys right there are the ones to beat to me. You know, Ben Flair, he's won it twice. Spencer Skipper, he's perennial favorite out here. He's always made the finals. Galarmi Tomega, he's won out here before. Guys like Ben Flair, Jeff Hubbard. I would say Mike Stewart, but he's not in the comp, which kind of sucks. He's injured, so that's a really big bummer. He's running the comp. I mean, our crowd favorites are definitely Ben Flair, Mari Levin. Jeff Hubbard, you know, all the multiple champions out here, but there's, I don't know, if, uh, like any heat out here is a tough one, you know, you can never count anyone out. You also got your new school rippers, guys like Pierre and Houston, who are going to be definitely pushing the limits and doing some massive crazy years. Omri Laverne, Jared Houston, the current world champion, he's really hard to, to beat in contests. I mean, he just goes for it. And Omri too, Omri's just a machine, so those two guys are probably going to be the hardest to beat, I think. Guys like Ben Player, Amori Laverne, Jeff Harbert, and uh, actually Ryan Hardy did a really, really great heat, and um, there's a bunch of guys that can win this event. I guess like everyone is going to be the guy you got to watch out for out here. Regardless of who is winning heats, the undeniable passion of these dedicated bodyboarders was ever present. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm 40 years old, so I've been bodyboarding for 
forever, you know, ever since I was a kid growing up, you know, I'm just in search of that perfect wave, just that perfect feeling that you get in, you're on such a high and you're so stoked and just that camaraderie when you're in the water, it's just such, such good feelings and vibes, you can't get that anywhere else, you know, you just feel an elevated state of euphoria, it's unreal. My reason to wake up uh, sometimes in the morning to go surf at 6 a.m. in the freezing cold winter. I met my wife through bodyboarding. I met a great friend through bodyboarding. I have a healthy life now through bodyboarding. So, you know, I owe a lot to the sport and yeah, probably means my life. If you ask me what is the thing you most like to do, bodyboarding, I love it. I don't plan on quitting anytime soon or probably my whole life. I'm just going to live bodyboarding forever. I love to be in the water with this board, with the fins, have an experience with the ocean, with the God. But it's, it's like a religion for me. Yeah, just pure passion. And no one's getting rich off this, you know. So it's just, uh, it's just fun for us to be out there. And uh, you know, now I am fortunate enough to, you know, to live off bodyboarding, and uh, consider myself very lucky to, to do that. But um, at the same time, it's you know. I guess I'd still continue to ride the way as I do tomorrow if all well, that dried up, you know. So it's just purely on a passion basis for me. As the quarters turned into the semis, the tip of the spear was narrowing down. Brazilian Dudu Pedra showed determination and prowess, but along with fellow countryman Galerme Tomega, fell just short of the final. Drop knee champ Dave Hubbard showed off his skill going prone, edging his way closer and closer to a pipe final, but in the end, he was unable to make it through. And along with APB tour stalwart Amari Laverne, settled for a semi-final finish. Making it to the final heat was a truly international group of pipe chargers, with a South African, Australian, Frenchman, and Hawaiian representative. Don't go anywhere. The final hits the water as soon as we get back. Keep it here on Board Stories. Promotional support for Board Stories is provided by Waimea Valley, where Hawaii comes alive. Check them out online at waimeavalley.net and give them a visit next time you're on the North Shore. It's finals time at the Mike Stewart Pipeline Invitational, where an international field is ready to battle it out for the win. After six rounds of competition, the 68-man field was narrowed down to just four. And despite the heavy list of invitational riders, the final four were all APB seeds. Hailing from Maui, Jacob Romero has been representing for the Hawaiians on the APB tour for several years, and cracking a pipe final is way up on his list. Australian Louis Finnegan is no stranger to heavy waves. Coming from West Oz, he rides the barrel as good as anyone, and keen to prove that by taking out a win. The lone French competitor, Pierre-Louis Costas, has been working on his pipe skills since coming to Hawaii as a teenager, just waiting for his chance to strike in a final. Current APB world champ, South African Jared Houston, is arguably the guy to beat. With keen tube sense and a knack for boosting above the lip, Jared looks sharp heading into the final. At the start of the heat, Jacob Romero put up an early lead focusing his efforts on the right at back door. But with plenty of time left, Jared Houston and Louis Finnegan kept pushing for higher scores. Coming on strong near the end and adapting to the changing conditions, Frenchman Pierre-Louis Costas huffed himself into an impossible backflip on a pipeline left and followed it up with a lofty air reverse on a back door right for a combined 19.26, a nearly perfect heat total, plenty enough to claim the win. I wasn't going so good in the beginning, you know, Jacob was definitely 
you know, the one ripping, and uh, then Jerry got some sick ones, Louis as well. I found out that uh, big moves were very well uh, rewarded, and uh, you know, kind of better for me. You know, I feel probably more confident chasing the airs, and my main focus was to get, uh, you know, the biggest air I could. But I got that first left, you know, and I did a big backflip. I, I couldn't believe I landed it. I was like, wow, this is crazy. I climbed it so hard because it's pretty the best thing I did the whole comp. And then uh, I was first, and then the ride came through. I was false priority. No one, no one wanted it. Pretty good ramp, I guess. Try to go as high as I could, you know. And uh, I thought I was gonna land at the back. I was 100% sure that I was good, cool photo. And then I felt myself landing in the form and I went, forced myself to push it. And then after that reverse, I thought, yeah, I'm, I might. But I, I had no idea of the scores. I had no idea if the other ones got good waves. Cause I just saw everyone, you know, catching waves. So I had, I had no idea really. I couldn't listen. I didn't have a watch. I was kind of my own world in this whole entire event. And I worked so hard on it, you know, I came here when I was 13 and um, I think experience was probably the key today. Learning how to ride back door was very important, you know, because um, I was more focused on fire probably the first years. I don't know, I don't know, I feel so hard to describe, you know, a feeling of something like this, you know. I worked so hard to win this competition and I'm still like a little bit, you know, fuzzy. It's pretty much the best day of my life right now, you know. It's up there with the world title for sure. Wow, what a great event. Big congrats to PLC for taking out the win and all the competitors who threw down at Pumping Pipeline. Special thanks goes out to everyone behind the scenes that made this event possible. You guys are awesome. Be sure to check out the next episode of Board Stories. It's going to be a good one. As for me, your host, Chris Ochonic, I'll see you in the water. Aloha. Special thanks to Science, Kellogg's, Gyro, MS Viper, and the APB and IBA Pro Tours for making this event possible.